This is part of a series of videos on LC3 programming. In this video, I will focus on the notion of a pointer. Pointers are also called references. Now this is a general programming concept. We will see how it's implemented. The implementation of this concept is done using the notion of an address. So let's let's take a simple program and see if we can understand what we mean by the the concept of a pointer or a reference. So I'm going to start by looking at memory. I'm going to write some prog a simple program, but I'm going to first visualize it like this. So I have a I have at some memory location in x 3000 a say there is a thing. I don't know. I'm just calling it a thing because for now it could be an integer, it could be a character, it could be something else later. So I'm just going to call it a thing. So there is a there's at that location there is a thing. And right now let's say the thing is the number 42. Okay? And so we are we want to refer to this thing, we want to get the thing, we want to look at the thing, we want to modify the thing. So let's see how we can do that programmatically. So let's say I have some code at x3000 and I'm rather than put the code in this box here, I'm going to write, write the code here. So we have first the, the, the notion that thing, I'm going to write this a statement here, thing is 42 or thing has a value which is 42. We can also say the address of thing is x3000 x3000 a so the interesting thing is when i do something like in my code let's say i do something along the lines as saying um, uh, if i if i declare a dot and i say dot fill and i say dot fill 42 and let's say I even I'm more specific if I say dot org x 3000 a and I say dot fill 42 and if I were to give it a label let's say I call this some um, uh, p thing p thing is a symbol and it has the symbol is actually the address which has a value 3000 a so i don't need a symbol in order to refer to this i can if i know where it is in memory i can actually refer to it without the address without the label that's what we do when we use uh, an offset where the offset is a number rather than a label so so just to clarify we don't when we define a, a, a memory location if we Put a label on the memory location what we're really doing is referring it to by its referring to its address and not the actual value in there so conceptually that's what i want you to keep in mind now let's see how my how i can work with this so i'm going to start a new page here and let's look at memory again and in memory i have a thing and thing is has a value 42 for now I'm gonna skip the whole idea of labeling this so I'm gonna call this guy to be at memory location 3000 a and I'm gonna write some code at x 3000 so uh, a byproduct of of this little video is for you to understand all instructions that are related to data movement LD LDR LDI LEA ST, STI, and ST, ST, STR, and STI. I'm going to cover all of these because all of these in some way uh, help us or guide us in using this notion of a pointer. So let's start with 
first an instruction at x3000 at x3000 i'm going to put this instruction called ld r not pound 9 i could have just used if i had a label on it i could have used it but what what we know is this instruction because this is instruction is at x3000 it's going to do r not is going to get the value of the memory contents of x3001 plus 9 in this case that's x3000 a which for us is the value so r not currently has the value 42 because that's the memory contents of that so now we can we can also make a statement here that r not holds the thing in fact it holds a copy of the thing let's do another instruction if i were to write at x3001 the statement lea r1 let's say with a pound 8 then we know what this does is r1 really gets not the contents of that location but r1 simply gets 3002 plus 8 which happens to be x3000 a so so in other words i'm gonna write this out as r1 has the value right now of x 3000 a so i can also make the statement that r1 holds the address of thing in fact i can make this statement that r1 refers to thing or even I can use the word R1 points to thing. These are all synonymous statements. So in other words for us right now R1 is a pointer slash reference to thing. Thing which is at memory location x 3000 a so this is the fundamental concept of a reference or a pointer so let's go one step forward and do a statement at x 3002 which is i'm going to store the value of r1 in some location and i'm going to see what it is i'm going to define another location in memory let's say at memory location 3000 f i have a currently just a block word um, pound one which means that i would have reserved a space there of one memory location so this store operation then will will take what is in r1 and write it to the memory contents of x3003 plus 12 which is x3000f which is 15 which means that in this location now I'm going to have the number that is in R1 which happens to be the address of which is R1 is currently holding 3000a so 3000a goes there. Now not only can a register hold an address but even a memory location can hold an address. So we can also say, we can also say that X3000F holds a reference slash pointer to thing. So let's do uh, what 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 is the point of holding a reference or what is a reference bias? Let's do another operation. Let's say I have an operation at 3003 which says LDR R2 R1 pound 0. So because R1 is now a reference, I can use it in this in, in an LDR operation. So what does this one do? 
R2 now gets the value that is the memory contents of use R1 as the base and add 0 to it. So that means that I'm going to get the contents of memory location 3000A which tells me that R2 now has the value 42 as well. So if I have a reference, then I can use this operation. This LDR operation for us is called a way to dereference, meaning that I can get, I can using this operation, I can get that which R1 is referring to. So dereference is that which R1 is referring to. Now for now we're saying that which R1 is R1 plus an offset is referring to but for now we, we made the offset zero but later we will change it. Okay so let's use another one. Here's another way to do it. This is a little more involved because this one is saying I can do LDI R3 pound 10. Now if R1 were holding an address, then I can dereference it like that. But what if I have a memory location that's holding an address? I can still access what it's pointing to by dereferencing the memory location. That's what LDI does. So in other words, LDI is saying take the memory contents of the memory contents of the off PC plus offset 3005 plus 10 which is in this case a 3000A which means that the memory contents of 3000A sorry 3000F the memory contents of 3000F are 3000A and the memory contents of 3000A are, are put into R3 in other words R3 now gets the value 42 so so if we have a register that holds an address, then we can dereference it using LDR. If you have a memory location that's holding an address, so if you want to dereference, a memory location, then we use LDI. So let's go one step further and see if we have we can add a couple of interesting operations to see other other variants like str sdi uh, operations also so i'm going to add to this uh, so let's go ahead and start a new page so again right now we know that our x3000 is where my code is x3000a is where my number 42 which is my thing is and we know that x3000f currently holds the address x3000a and just as a reference we know that r0 has the value um, x uh, has the value 42 r1 currently holds the value x3000a and both r2 and r3 are also holding the value 42 okay so let's let's pick up another instruction so I'm gonna I was at 3004 so I'm gonna write an instruction at 3005 which is happens to be an add instruction and I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my R2 and I'm gonna add one to it in other words R2 is now going to have the value R2 should now have the value 43. So let's see what I can, the, what we can do as far as um, referring to this, but not to load it, but to store it or modify it. So I'm going to do an str, and I'm going to use R2, which I just modified, but I'm going to write to the same location, which is I'm going to dereference R1 but this time I'm not dereferencing for loading purposes I'm dereferencing for for writing purposes so what this one does then is it's going to take the memory 
it's going to say take the value that is in R2 and put it in the memory contents of R1 plus 0, R1 being the base. So now we are simply modifying this from being 42 to going up to, so let's say R, what this does is R2 has that value, so this guy goes from 42, 40 to 43. That is what this instruction would have done. So again, this one is the SR here is to dereference. But this dereference is because it's a store for writing rather than for reading. So let's use another instruction. Here is another instruction x3007. X3007 is an STI and I'm going to use R0 which I, still holds the value 42 and I'm going to use an R0 with a pound 7. So right now my what this says is go to the memory location. So take what is in R0 and write it to the memory contents of the memory contents of X3008 plus 7, which means I go to X3000F, I find the memory contents of that, which in our, this is 3000F, so this now is 3000 a because that's what 3000 F had which means that I am modifying this guy right now I'm gonna write it back so this instruction here will remodify this back to a 42 so I'm just showing you how there there are ways to access this for writing either by using a register or by using an offset if you know where where a location where the pointer is being held. So here's another instruction, just let's wrap it up, 3008. And this is a trap instruction, and the purpose of this trap instruction is just to, this is to, it's called an out, which outputs whatever is in register R0. Um, it'll output to the console. Interestingly, the reason why I called it a thing and I put the number 42 is, you. we can think of this as a number 42, but trap, this X21 says, give me something in R0. R0 currently holds the number 42. So it's not gonna treat it as a number, it's gonna treat it as a character and output. So what you will see on the console, and we will write this, we will run this code. On the console, you'd see the character star because 42 is the ASCII value for the character star. Okay, let's wrap it up. So this is my last instruction. I'm gonna do a 3000F, a 3009, and a 3009 I have a trap, which is an X25. So that's gonna halt my machine. So I'm gonna put this code up. Um, I write it up and put it up on the YouTube channel. Now. Here's an interesting modification of what we've just done, which is, what if my thing that I had in memory, again at X3000A, what if this thing were not just a number, maybe it was a number and something else. So for example, there was a, a record of some kind, it was a student a score if you will this had two attributes there was a score here and right next to it there was something else like a uh, grade so this was let's say a 90 and the grade was the character a the letter a so now i can refer to like we did before if i was at x3000 let's say i can refer to at X3000, I can do something like LEAs, for example. I can do LEA R, R1, let's say, with an offset of where is the thing. If the thing is, let's say, at 3000A, I'm going to use an offset of, let's say, 9. So now R1 gets the value X3000A. So now 
I can now because R1 is a reference so remember R1 R1 is a reference to our thing but our thing has two attributes it has a score attribute and a grade atti attribute a score attribute and a grade attribute so now if I want to do something like this at x3001 if I do something like LDR R not if you will with R1 if I use an offset of 0 I will get I will get the attribute which is the score attribute because I'm dereferencing it but I'm using an offset of 0 to get to the 0th attribute now on the other hand so R0 in this case R0 is going to get the value which is 90 now on the other hand if I did an LDR let's say x3002 if I did an LDR R2 with an R1 but an at offset of 1 then I'm saying that I want to refer to the grade so now my R2 is going to get the value the letter A the ASCII value for A so the point of our, our using a base which is our reference in this case R1 is once I set the base I can get to any attribute this this thing now is no longer just a number the thing is all of this stuff put together is my thing it's not one one attribute but multiple attributes so this thing can get as big as you want in fact I could say you could I could add another other attribute here to the thing let's say a second attribute which is a next and we'll see an example uh, of this in a later video so I could use a next and next here let's say is pointing to another thing so it's pointing to in other words it's an address of x3000 um, let's say 301f and at x3000f there is an other thing so now I can go from one thing to the next thing simply by referring to that address so if I let's say now uh, look at it like this uh, now I can do something like at x3000 Three, let's say I can do something like LDR R3 R1 with pound 2 which means that R3 is now R3 is a reference let's say to another thing and this another thing let's say is of the same data type so let's say we came down here at x3000 301f at x301f we have another thing and this guy this other thing has also a score let's say 85 a score of uh, rank of B and maybe he's got another one it points to which is the next that it points to which is at 4010 let's say so now I can because I have uh, the R1, R3 is now a reference I can do things like LDR R2 if you will I'm gonna just get the second person's next person's grade if I did LDR R3 with a pound 1 then what I'm really doing is I'm getting the memory contents of remember R3 is a reference to another thing which means that R3 here was R3 held a value which is x301f right now so I'm gonna get the memory contents of x301f plus 1 which is this guy which means that R2 is now gonna hold the grade of the next thing I hope this helps you understand pointers and this notion of reference uh, and it's uh, this can this clarity will help you when you get to higher level programming